Tim Ives from the Scarborough Church, how are you? I hope all is well. I hope that it is a sunny, beautiful day wherever you are. And if it's not a sunny, beautiful day wherever you are, that you're making it a sunny, beautiful day wherever you are. Look what's happening right out in our little walk around stream area. Yep, the tulips are coming up. Every year we plant a few more tulip bulbs and and we do that back in November when everything's sort of closing down, right? And uh, back then you don't think anything's going to grow again. Or maybe you do. But uh, we plant them and we plant them with hope. And on a sunny uh, pre-spring day like this one, there they are. That'll help you believe well, I'm glad you're here. We are, uh, we are the Scarborough Church. We gather on Wednesdays and Sundays, and any other time we can. Uh, please do uh, uh, come here anytime you want. And uh, all the videos are on uh, the Facebook um, page or the YouTube channel, so even if you miss one, you can come back anytime. Uh, we call this uh, Good News from the Scarborough Church. Uh, good news is what is the story that we tell? That uh, our lives are filled with good news, and that uh, going forward, it is our uh, honor to celebrate that, and that which, the, which is good. Good for the people around us, good for ourselves, good for God. And uh, that is the way that we find our way to live. It's good news. Uh, find the way to live the life that you've been given. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds sometimes when we are challenged or afflicted, uh, but God is with us always. And that is good news. Amen. So every Wednesday we uh, get together, we have, a, we have some Bible. We have an inspiring picture like that one. No, they will be beautiful uh, daffodils when they, when they come up. Yep, spring's coming. So we're in the Gospel of John. And uh, this, it says, okay, when the two days were over. Well, what two days? Remember my thing, I'm always talking about context. When you sit down and read the Bible, you want to know the context. It, it's not really um, all that uh, interesting. It's not all that meaningful to pull out a word here, a sentence there, something that seems to mean this and might need, mean something else if it was in a different context. It's very important uh, when reading the Bible to know the context. Now, this John 4, for those that know the Gospel of John, this is the story of the woman at the well. And this is after that has happened. And if you remember that story, Jesus is midday, meets a woman at, at, at the well and, and asks her for a glass of water and they have this interchange and pretty soon he is telling her things about her life that no one knows or he, a stranger shouldn't know and she comes to believe. This is what happens in all the stories from John. Uh, there's an event, there's uh, people around, there's things that happen, and whoever's involved or someone involved comes to belief. 
So that has happened. In fact, the people that heard the story, the people who saw kind of what happened and heard her testimony have come to believe. And that's when uh, the Gospel of John says, when the two days were over, he went from the place to Galilee. So he's going from Samaria to Galilee. All right. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came to, again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And the official said to him, Sir, come down before my boy, little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said, Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed, along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. God bless this reading to our use. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks. We give thanks to be gathered in your name. We give thanks for all good gifts. I ask that these words be acceptable to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, a wonderful story of healing. A little, little boy is healed. The, the father is relieved. And anytime we see that, if there's any story where you know, uh, it works out, uh, so people are okay, there's a happy ending. We like that. At least I like that. Uh, any story you read, I mean, there, there's lots of research on this. Uh, human beings like happy endings, and, and I'm not sure because there are so few, or um, in the end, uh, uh, ours is not. Uh, uh, in, in our lifetimes is not a happy ending and we wish it was some other way. Uh, not that God does not take care of us after we die, but uh, that process, that transition, that is, is very difficult for everybody and every one of us who has been through it, uh, we know that this is uh, no picnic. Um, uh, but, so, so that's why we like happy endings. We like our stories with happy endings, happily ever after. Uh, as if, you know, eternity goes on, life goes on forever, and, and people are just happy and smiling the whole time. That's a great ending. Uh, and this is that way too, but uh, if, if we just go with, oh yeah, that's a good thing, that's what Jesus did, isn't that wonderful? And kind of think that it was all Jesus doing, and uh, then we don't learn anything. And we don't learn anything about what it is to have faith. And we don't learn anything what it is to live this life that God has given us in the best way possible. We just, if we just go, oh, that's a great thing that happened that Jesus did and that, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and do not understand the participation of the Father in this, not the Heavenly Father, but the Father of the boy who was healed, then, um, then, as I said, there isn't much to, the, to get out of it. There isn't much to learn from. But please notice, please notice that um, uh, Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I don't know if this was a dig at him. I don't know if this was uh, what he has experienced in a lot of people. Unless they see some kind of miracles, they won't believe. Uh, or, or it isn't clear to me what's going on there. But the official says to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Demonstrating that, that um, before he's seen sign and wonders, before he's seen miracles, before anything, 
he says, please, please help. And, and that is like a step out in faith, right? I believe you can help. Please come and help. And uh, uh, Jesus said, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. Do you see what's happened here? Um, it, it doesn't, it's not just some kind of magic that happens and poof, God has saved us. But the, the, the man who wanted his son healed took this little step forward in faith. Okay, I'm going to believe here. Uh, maybe it's the only chance I got to help my son. But for whatever reason, I'm going to believe here and take that little step forward of faith. And then uh, Jesus says, well, your son will live. And then it says the man believed, believed the word. And off he went to see. Uh, uh, so uh, two steps of faith. And then it gets down to um, when he discovers that his son is okay, uh, uh, the father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now wait a second. He's already taken two steps of faith and now what are you saying? He, that wasn't real faith and, and now he believes? No. This is another step of faith. It... Uh, He's opening our, his heart, he's opening his mind, he's opening his life to the possibilities that God has. And that is beyond just his son. That is beyond uh, what has happened. Well, if this happened in this case, if faith can uh, bring transformation in this case, um, I am going to give my life to those possibilities. So it's a step forward process where they are try where where Jesus has really challenged this this person to um, to step out in faith and he does and and then in the end the the man is going to step out in faith again and then again this is the life of faith it isn't like okay you know you you, you sign on and say yeah I believe that and then you're done uh, that, that is so much not the case. Uh, to live the life of the faith is to make that choice for God over and over again in our challenges, in our darkest challenges, in those times in our life where we're feeling, oh, no, uh, to turn and choose God once again. And it's not a once and for all. It is a process. It's a process that goes on throughout our whole lives. And the hope of this, the transformation that comes with this is that the more we can do this, the more we grow unto God. I've said before that life is like this whole process of getting us to surrender to God so that in that moment when we die and we have nothing else to do but fall into God's arms, we'll have plenty of confidence and uh, uh, in that moment, it won't be scary at all. But we will be gods, and that's what the whole process is about, becoming the children of God. And yes, indeed, it's not, it's not just today, it's not just tomorrow, it's every day that we are challenged to move forward uh, in this wonderful light that's called faith. Amen. So it's funny, I never really looked at that story. I was always so focused on the, um, the story about the woman at the well. Sort of, you know, the, in, in John, you, you get to the end of the story or the, and you think, well, that's, that's all, let's move on to the next story. Because like every chapter has one story and then a lot of commentary. But this kind of has two stories. This is, this is another lesson uh, in, in chapter four, worth listening to. We're worth listening to. Oh. Let's take just a moment to uh, think about the possibilities that God has for us always.
The other thing we do on uh, Wednesdays is pray for one another. That was a good idea to pray for one another. What could it hurt? It helps a lot. So um, I'd like to continue in prayer for uh, Mike and Allison, who um, have a very uh, sad anniversary coming up that their, their son uh, died last year uh, in this month. I heard from Gita and she wants us to pray for her uh, friend Sue who has been in the hospital and I'd just like to say Gita is one of the heroes. She's a doctor down at Phelps uh, Hospital and has been so overworked and has done uh, such an incredible job. Uh, I, I hope, I pray that it ends that things <laughs> start uh, getting easier soon. So Michelle Dilser uh, reports that uh, her boss Greg, his father died, we'll pray for him. Uh, Terry DeTore asked uh, that we pray for Nepo Sateri. Uh, I'd like to pray for Doug Barnard who has leukemia. Pray for Rachel Lombardo, who continues to um, uh, recover from her open heart surgery. Uh, Esther Phelps, who has cancer. Corinne, who has uh, responsibility for her parents who are failing. Terry DeTore, Pat DeSpirito, Sean Kern, and doctors and nurses everywhere, leaders, justice, and peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we do give thanks. We give thanks for this chance to gather. We give thanks for your Holy Spirit. Fill us up with your light and your love so that we might uh, see the possibilities of our lives uh, here, now, today. We pray for Gita. We pray for her friend Sue. We pray for Michael and Mike and Allison. We pray for... Um, uh, Lynn Hudden's mom, who's in the hospital. We pray for Nepo and, and uh, Greg's dad, and Doug and Rachel and Esther and Corinne and Terry and Pat and Sean, doctors and nurses everywhere, leaders, local leaders, state leaders, regional leaders, federal leaders, always. Help them help us, Lord, and that we all might go together uh, towards a new day. And we pray for justice, and we pray for peace. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, uh, please come on Sunday, 1130, right here, same, same uh, bat channel. That was a long time ago. Um, Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, uh, become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Uh, it is our intention to uh, fill that with all kinds of very uh, uplifting content as we start moving more and more in uh, that direction. Yeah, so, uh, blessings to everybody. Uh, see you soon. Amen.